Oh my gosh. Oh, and I, I didn't even say I lost 13 pounds. I didn't <laughs> tell everybody. And so I lost 13 pounds and it was crazy. And what, and what I did love about the program is how much you checked in with us and you were aware of, like, okay, like why, why is this happening? How are you feeling? And especially with like changing, changing my plate, because I think I lost like nine pounds in the first three weeks. My body's like, yes, let me purge. Right <laughs> and it was just so quick. This is seriously the best I have felt in my life, in my 32 years on this planet. I'm just so happy. I'm so happy that you seriously changed my life for the better. You know, hear me, this was like seriously the best decision I made in my life. Like that's not an exaggeration at all. Hello my honeys, it is Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy. I'm a nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program. If you are interested in that program, go to healthyemmy.org or just click the link in the down bar. Also make sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video, I upload twice a week. Today I'm so thrilled to be sharing with you the story of my incredible client, Sarah. Sarah just glows. Her energy and her warmth is so contagious and if you are looking for a good start to your day, a good break in your day, or a good end to your day, then keep watching watching this video. Sarah was stuck in a binge restrict cycle. She was either on it with her healthy eating, she's got it, but then right when she would have something that wasn't quote unquote healthy or good or on plan, it was a runaway train. And I mean, she was off to the races flip-flopping between these two extremes, not able to find any peace or balance. This was just eight weeks ago. And when you watch Sarah's interview, you're gonna say, oh, what? How could that have been her reality eight weeks ago? But she has just dove in to the Slim on Starch lifestyle and had such success. She is such an inspiration and I'm not gonna talk any longer. She is the star of the show today. Let's get into it and let's meet Sarah. So my name is Sarah and I'm 32 years old and I kind of, I discovered Emmy a little bit ago and I found her YouTube videos and I, I was just, I was at a place where I was kind of lost, confused, wondering like how I could live a better, like healthier lifestyle. So to take you back a little bit, um, Starting in college is when I, I was a student athlete. I ran track and I was a sprinter. I ran the 200 and 400, yay, <laughs> the runners out there. But um, I was always aware of my body and my weight and how I looked compared to other girls. And especially in terms of like competing and I would have people tell me like, oh, maybe if you lost weight, you could run faster. And I was just always aware of my weight in terms of exercise and performance. And just aesthetically too, it was just like always on my mind. And the first time I really noticed it in myself was in college. Um, and I kind of felt pressure because I had a scholarship. And so I was just like hyper aware of weight, performance, all of that. And, and it was also wasn't until college that I was away from home, not eating home the home cooked meals anymore and you know, having the cafeteria food and all this stuff was available to me that was not available before. And I just, I feel like I kind of just lost control. I never gained too much weight, but I would eat like the cakes and desserts or the, the pancakes or like who's eating pancakes every day, <laughs> you know, just like stuff that was available to me. And, and then I'll be like, okay, well, I'm going to have this hard workout for track. So I'll just run it off. It doesn't matter. It's okay. I was always in the mindset of like out running or out exercising the, the poor diet, the, you know, the foods that weren't nutritionally high in value. And so um, I was always on this like yo-yo situation. So I'd be eating high, really healthy and then I would drop off, but then I'd be like, okay, well I have track practice or I have meat coming or whatever. And so it's okay. And so I had a really unhealthy mindset in terms of exercise and food. And then also body image. I was always comparing myself to other girls who I thought looked fitter than me and all of that. So hot mess. And then um, after college was over, um, getting into the real world and I, excuse me, I still wanted to exercise because I was, you know, once you're an athlete, you just always want to move your body, do something. And, but I was still kind of doing that 
with balancing if I wasn't eating so healthy. Um, and then I found like the plant-based vegan lifestyle a few years ago. And I was okay, well, this, this makes me feel good. But then, you know, I would go into like eating the processed vegan meals and the burgers and the junk food it would hit up Trader Joe's you know they have all the vegan <laughs> junk food and so I was like well this doesn't make me feel good either and so I was really just on the journey trying to figure out what made me feel good just my body like you know after you swallow the food how do you feel like you know if I was low on energy and all of that and so I just, I just felt lost because it was I was either like super healthy like oh I'm like strictly vegan I feel good I would lose weight I feel fit and then all of a sudden I would just stop working out and, you know, eat the pizza, eat the fast food. I'm like, okay, well now I need to get back on it. Just like weeks on weeks off. And oh my God. So like I said, I'm 32 now, I've been over like 12 plus years of this journey. And I was after, it was at the end of last year. And I just felt like, I don't want to, I don't want to live another year like this. Like nothing was changing. It was just the same routine over and over again. And I was, I was tired of myself. Basically I was just tired of myself and, um, I was just unhappy. And I had heard of the SOS program for a while. Like I would seen you talk about it and I'd seen some interviews and like before and after pictures. And I was like, why don't I need to, I need to just, I need to do it. Like, clearly I can't keep promises to myself. Clearly I cannot do this on my own. And what drew me to your program is like the fact that you have mindset coaches, you have nutrition, like you have people there to help you. And I said, I, I need help. I need help. Like you, I just had to come to terms with myself. Like Sarah, listen, you, you think you can do this on your own, but right now you cannot. And so that's when I pulled the trigger and I said, here we go, Emmy. I, it's time. <laughs> so yeah, that's what brought me to the program. And oh my gosh, I'm just so happy. I'm so happy that like, you seriously changed my life for the better. You know, some people change your life for the worse. <laughs> this, this was for, oh my God, I don't even know where to begin. So, okay. So now we are to the program and here we go. And so um, one of the best parts is the mindset journal, just like really checking in with myself, tuning in and it's like every single day I need to, I need to check in and like, write Like how am I feeling and my mindset and then the foods I'm eating with the taking pictures and like, listen, <laughs> we got to do it. Even the there a couple of times I went off plan, but I feel like even those times it was like an intentional, like, I know I had to take a picture of this. I'm going to eat it, but I know I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> and just the fact that I know like someone is checking in on me and I can talk to someone about what happened at that time. Um, I loved it. It was, it, it's what I needed. And so from the beginning um, with the food prepping, I will say, okay, listen, you guys, <laughs> like when you prepare, the, what is it? What did you say, Emmy? You plan, plan to, fit. no, listen, what? you fail to plan. <laughs> If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. There you go. Um, oh my gosh. Like that was one of the first game changers. And because the, a lot of times when I find myself like choosing the unhealthy options, I didn't have stuff in my fridge. I didn't go to the grocery store. And so if you have the options available to you, it's more likely that I will choose those. And so it, I would, I, it became a routine, a structure that I needed. I would do my grocery shopping and then I would cook all my potatoes cook all my veggies and prepare my fruit. And it was just like, cause I work from home. So when it would be lunchtime or mealtime or whatever, I would just go to the fridge, boop, pop it in the microwave. Like it's so easy, like the ease, like how you explain like, and just the simplicity of this way of eating is what I needed. Like I've told you, keep it simple. Okay. That's what works for me. Like I, I know like a, a lot of people in this program, just a lot of people who eat this way, have these beautiful recipes and just these plates, this looks so good. But I just, <laughs> I'm not that person to, to do that. I just don't, I need to just give me the potatoes, give me the rice, give me the veggies. And that's it. Like if it, if it, if it becomes complicated, I just, I just check out. I don't want to do it. <laughs> and it's so funny because my, my boyfriend, like he is like such a chef. He's a cook in the kitchen. He can prepare these beautiful meals. And I'm just like, give me my, give me my potatoes, pop it in the air fryer, pop it in the oven. And it's just, it's just easy. It's just something less for me to think about. And I think one of the biggest 
things about eating this way is that I don't think about food all the time. Like I, I think about it in terms of just energy because I, I looked to food as emotional comfort, stress relief, when I was feeling anxious about, okay, well, let me, what can I snack on? What can I, like the one, <laughs> let me just talk on my story really quick. So the one, one of the times I went off plan, I'd lost my driver's license. I was stressed. I like immediately went to the store and got a cookie. And just because I was feeling anxious and stressed and I was like, I want a cookie. So I was still in that mindset, like food, this sugar will make me feel better, which in the moment I was munching on it. But it's like, why am I choosing food to relax myself? Like, there are other things that you can do. And so that goes into another thing that you got that you taught us in terms of focusing on primary foods instead of, you know, actual food is secondary food, but the primary food, like, what are we really, what am I truly hungry for? Like, what, what am I needing in my life that is not nutritionally based you know it's like how, how can I feed my soul and not my stomach and so that was a huge mindset shift because for so many years if I was stressed if I was upset even if I was happy like celebratory like oh let me get some ice cream because some good news like why why don't I eat ice cream because of good news like why don't I just go hang out with a friend like just not seeing food as a way to get that emotional comfort is huge huge for me um oh my gosh yeah the like just learning about the primary foods was just amazing incredible incredible I mean I remember when we first spoke you said to me it's either it's one or the other I'm either eating healthy and I'm in my groove for like three weeks mm -hmm. or if I do one thing I eat one thing bad it just flips all the way over to the other side and I swing mm -hmm. the pencil the other way and it's one or the other there's no in between mm -hmm. so my question for you is this time, what made it different that the pendulum is not swinging back full force and staying there? There were some times on the program, like you talked about with the cookie, when you couldn't find your license, then mm -hmm. it ended up being in your apartment or something. You had it the whole time. It was one of those yeah. situations. But how come after you had that cookie, it didn't turn into a, well, you know what? I messed up SOS, so screw mm -hmm. it. I'm done with this program. That was toward the end of the program too that that happened. Yeah. So what, what's different now that you're able to get right back on with SOS? I think because I, I had worked so hard to put that structure in place in terms of like, when I am feeling stressed or anxious and checking in with my primary foods and not secondary food. And so, yeah, I slipped in that moment, but then even like once I found my driver's license and calmed down, so, okay, what, why, why did I choose the cookie? And like, not even beating myself up because, you know, in the past it's like, oh my God, I'm horrible. I'm a failure. I just can't do anything. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't spiral out of control. And it's like, I, what I'd been doing was working. And so not to be confused, like what makes me feel good in the long run in terms of like the, the healthy foods I was eating, but in terms of the primary foods, I knew like what I needed to do to really calm myself down. And like I journaled or I talked to my boyfriend or, you know, talked to friends and family or yoga, you know, whatever, all my primary foods, but it's just like not not seeing food as the way to fix the problem. And so like, I guess I'd worked that muscle in terms of, um, I don't know, like, like trusting, trusting myself in my primary foods and not going towards the secondary food. It's like, I'd, I'd known what to do because you taught me. And so it's like, I, I didn't have that knowledge before. I did, I never, I'd never seen foods that like primary foods that way. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that's, that's something that I learned that helped me to, to not just go all the way off the rails. If I fall off, I just hop right back on because I know that I know that it works. There's no more confusion. There's no more. I feel I like I don't feel lost anymore. Like I I know that this works for me, and if I do go off of SOS for a hot second, I'm like, okay, well, we can get right back on plan. And I know, I know what the results are going to be, and I know how I'm going to feel. And so I remember you said something where like, if I'm thinking about like, oh, if I'm, you know, any cravings you have, well, one, <laughs> one I'll say, I, I still play in my head all the time, what you eat today, you crave tomorrow. Like I, I literally say that to myself, not every day, but when I do have like, oh, I, I haven't had fries in a while, like, but do I really want fries? 
like what because I don't want to keep craving fries like I, I play that in my head but not in an unhealthy way I don't see fries as evil it's just like I mean I know I don't really feel good like I'm all about just feeling good and what just feeding my body what what is good for it mm-hmm. and so like I, I love like I told my friends like, what you eat today you crave tomorrow like I really, <laughs> like I love I love that statement and the more I eat this way, like the more I don't crave what I was eating before. And I know like I, okay. So what I was going to say is another saying that you said, um, play the tape all the way through. So <laughs> like whenever I would think like with like during the program, if I was like, oh, well, I really want like my boyfriend was making like pesto pasta or something. Oh, that smells so good. Like we just have a little bite. Like let me play the tape all the way through. If I had a bowl. How am I going to feel like after the bowl? Because like, we always go to, like Aki said, we always go to like in the moment. Oh, I know it's going to taste so good. I'm going to feel so happy. But then like after, how am I going to feel? And then how am I going to feel the next day? And then getting back on SOS. Like how, like what is all this going to be? Like play the tape all the way through. So I still, I still tell myself that. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't like the end of the tape. So we're not going to do it. <laughs> so um, seen that movie before and you didn't like the ending. Yes. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Like it's not, it's no more of just the impulsive acting anymore. It's like, okay, how, what is this going to make me feel like in the long run? It's like delayed gratification, not instant gratification. I was all about the instant gratification before. It's like, no, this is not good for me right now. I, I want to feel good in the long run. Like that's like my, my biggest takeaway. It's just like, no more instant. Oh, let me get these chips really quick. No, like why, why, like, why do I want? And then and now I feel like I'm asking myself more if I do get a craving for something that's not SOS. Like, why do I actually want that? And then um, I remember you talked about appetite cravings versus hunger. Yes, <laughs> versus like actual hunger. Like, why why am I drawn towards the cookies or the chips? Like, I'm not. No, if I'm not, if I don't want broccoli and potatoes right now, then I'm actually not hungry. So I like I'll, I'll ask myself too. Like, am I actually hungry or am I needing something else? And then that's where. I'll turn to their primary foods, but just like all the knowledge you instilled at me, it's just, I feel like I'm, I'm talking to myself, like, wait, what would Emmy do? No, no, we're not going to do that. (laughs) That's exactly the goal. I, I, you know, I want it to be if that I were, God forbid, hit by a bus, you could still hear me (laughs) in your head in these scenarios. Sometimes it's just one or two mantras that just change the game for you and they carry you through forever, for sure. Yeah. You, I can't believe we had our first conversation about eight weeks ago. That's so wild that you made such growth in such a short amount of time. And I think that we can credit it to the fact that you just came and you grabbed the bull by the horns and with the behaviors that you were engaging in that you didn't want to engage in, there was no shame attached to it. There was no um, guilt or anything. You were very matter of fact, you know, when the cookie thing, when cookie gate happened, or (laughs) when you're talking about the habits you don't want to engage in, you were just so upfront and you're like, this is what I do that I don't want to do anymore. And let's Mm -hmm. fix it. And that's how you've been so successful. You just grab the bull by the horns and we were like, let's go, let's take care of this. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, and I, I didn't even say I lost 13 pounds. I didn't <laughs> tell everybody. <laughs> but yes, in the eight weeks, I lost 13 pounds. It's like, I didn't like, I did not have a number in mind. And honestly, before this program, I didn't really weigh myself. I was just not a scale, but I was like, listen, the scale is not the best for my mental health. So let me just stay away from it. <laughs> but but like getting back on, obviously we need, to check, we need to track my progress. And so I lost 13 pounds and it was crazy. And what, and what I did love about the program is how much you checked in with us and you were aware of, like, okay, like why, why is this happening? How are you feeling? And especially with like changing, changing my plate, because I think I lost like nine pounds in the first three weeks my body's like yes let me purge right now (laughs) and it was was so quick and feel okay and that was like the ultimate game changer I I honestly had not felt that good exercising in a very long time in such a long time like I I I I felt so good like no lightheadedness no overtiredness it's like this is a body powered by potatoes I was like you know I was I was mo- I was eating most of the potatoes. <laughs> my my nutrition coach, Elena, I felt bad because I was like, I know this is the same plate every single day, but 
here we are. <laughs> but it was like when I find something that works, like I like I, I mean I know variety is good in the long run, but I just like this works and it still tastes good and I it makes me feel good. I I've, I've never really eaten potatoes before. It was just not I I didn't see it as a weight gain food like some people do. Mm. I was like, why am I, uh, potatoes? Like, that's the last thing I think about it. <laughs> but, but over time, and then the fact that I discovered Hanny Yams, I had never eaten, seen, heard of a Hanny Yam before <laughs> this program because I'd eaten those, hor- not horrible. But now if I try to eat an orange sweet potato, I'm like, what is this? There are so <laughs> many better options. <laughs> I am all about the Hanny Yams. And just the different potatoes available. It's just like, ah, who knew? Who is like such a superfood? And I mean, I'd read starch solution. Like, okay, I, I see it. I read it. But, you know, until you put it in action and like really see how it makes your body feel, listen, it, it's incredible. Incredible. So that as an athlete, I could say that body powered by potatoes. It works. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. I love it. So you date a, a very talented, he's a, ta- he's a man who has talent in the kitchen Yes. and you are smelling good foods all the time. And tell us a little bit, if you feel comfortable about how you navigate that with two different diets and the mm-hmm. temptation, smelling those foods, maybe a stressful day at work, you come home and he's cooking something delicious and maybe there's mm-hmm. wine being poured. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So the first, I guess, struggle maybe in the beginning. So we would always, and if he's cooking, you know, we would eat together. We'd eat the same meals and everything. And it was kind of like a bonding, like, oh, this is, you know, we're going over our days and we're sharing this meal. And it's just that shared experience. So then at first I was like, well, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. And so it was, it was a shift for both of us. And he had to cook less for himself. And I was doing my own thing. So one, navigating the kitchen, two people, two cooks in the kitchen. Okay. But secondly, I kind of felt like I was missing out on, you know, that, you know, that shared experience. A lot of people see food, you know, sitting down to eat special occasions. Like what are we eating together? And I kind of had to shift my mindset in terms of like, okay, this, like just our quality time is, is the shared experience I I should focus on. And I'm not missing out just because I'm not eating his, you know, whatever he prepared that day. Like I might be having my own plate, he's eating what he's eating, but we're still together. And so at first I did feel like I was missing out on something, but it's like, no, this is, this is not the primary food I need to focus on. It's, it's him and me. And, and then in terms of like us eating completely, completely different diet, I did get him to eat some potatoes on some occasions. <laughs> I was like, just try this for a couple of days. <laughs> But, but, you know, just different when we go to the store. It's like, okay, you go get yours. I'll get mine. We'll meet in the middle. So, you know, it's just like different different lifestyles. And we, we've we learned how to manage that, navigate that together. It's separate. And we have our little sections in the fridge. And this is my food prep. This is yours. And just splitting it up. So in the beginning, that was a little bit of a transition. But overall, it's just like we've realized, okay, it's food. Like This is what we're choosing to fuel our body it doesn't take away from our relationship, our shared time together, any of that. So, but it was, it was definitely an an adjustment in the beginning. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got a good one who wants to support you. And yes, he does. (laughs) He does make jokes sometimes. He's like, Sarah, she just eats potatoes. She's potato queen. (laughs) But but he's, I mean, he's seen the results. Like he'll, he'll still say sometimes, I need to try that. I need to try that. I'm like, try it let's do it together but uh you know everyone's on their own journey but like he like he sees like and he'll make jokes sometimes he's like I like you look incredible like you you seem like your energy is different just he's like this I mean this was one of the best things you could have done for yourself so yeah and you know we're we're not shutting him out with his amazing food completely because you have your system you have your signature Mm -hmm. system where if it's Mm -hmm. Valentine's Day or his birthday or Thanksgiving, whatever, you can have some fun stuff here and there um, yeah, and be able to incorporate it. So yeah. impressed when it was Valentine's Day and your boyfriend bought you chocolates. Yeah. You had taken what you learned in the lecture, which was that we train other people how to treat us with food. Mm-hmm. And so you were open and honest and, you know, said, I don't know if you said it to him. I couldn't quite tell by the situation if you had the 
conversation saying, you know, I don't really want this stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, But you were able to navigate that situation so that in the future, he won't buy you chocolates anymore, as opposed to eating the chocolates, then you kept getting you keep getting the chocolates. How exactly did you navigate that? Did you tell him because I remember reading about it in your mindset journal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he came back that morning with a bouquet of flowers and chocolates. See, like I used to love the Ferrero Rocher Rochers. Oh my God, the little hazel. We know, we know those chocolates. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so like always, like special occasions, even just random things. He'd be like, "Oh, I got you some chocolates," and it's like, "Yay!" And like, I, I would just love those chocolates. And so, not surprised that he brought them. And even though, he, yeah, I knew he wasn't trying to sabotage me or anything, but it was just a habit. It was something that I, you know, you train people how to treat you with food. And so. He came in and I was like, I was like, yay, flowers. I saw the chocolates. And and he like he immediately saw my face. He was like, oh, you can't have these, huh? I was like, well, you know what? I yes, I'm still in the program, but I, you know, I can have like I, I never want to like completely restrict myself. I was like, I can if I choose to, but I am not going to like, I'm gonna choose not to, because one, it is not part of the program, but also I this is not a food I want to continue eating. And he was completely like, at first he was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. Like, I totally forgot that, you know, this is something you can't eat. And I was like, no, it's okay. Like I used to eat these all the time. And now it's just not something I want to celebrate with. I don't want to eat. I don't want to eat these chocolates anymore. And he ate them (laughs) eventually. He's like, that's okay. He's like, more for me. (laughs) And he's like, I totally understand. And he's like, cool. No, no more chocolates. It's like no more chocolates and yeah it was it was a nice moment for both of us um that it's like we are transitioning away from the chocolates and it is okay because at first you know I always worry about hurting people's feelings and it's like I bought this for you like this is a gift and it's like ah but this is not like I appreciate the gesture but this is not part this is not (laughs) this is not part of my lifestyle anymore and he was completely understandable with that so yeah it was good (laughs) I said it once and I'll say it again you've got yourself a good one yeah (laughs) you said something toward the end of the program and you said even if I go on track I know how to get back on I know what I need to do if if in the future I start to veer off track I know how to get back on can Mm -hmm. you tell us exactly how it is that you have a plan to get back on should you veer off Yes. So I feel like even I know the eight weeks went by so fast, but I feel like I learned so much and I instilled all like all I feel like I I brought on all these new habits. It was a lot at once, but I feel like I just kind of clicked with it immediately and seeing the results and seeing how I feel. And it was just like I, I know exactly what to do to make me feel good. And even if I do like, even like with, with, with my cookie gate, like after I did that, and in fact, like the fact that I went right back on and, it, you know, forgot about it, it's like, okay, that happened, but we're back on track. And I didn't like, I kept seeing results and it was just like, it's like a little blip and you just keep going. And it was easy for me to get back on because I, I know what to expect. I know exactly what is going to happen when I go back to eating SOS. Like that is how I want to feel most of the time so I want to get back to that and yeah no matter what happens in the future vacations birthdays a little slip whatever but I know that this is how I want to feel and this and this is the first time in my life I have felt this way and like I don't want to I don't want to mess that up I don't want to sabotage that and so whatever you know but because I will say after eating the cookie it's like after that moment, after you swallow, it's like, I don't, this is not, this is not a food that makes me feel good in the long run. It's like, I, like, I'm all about feeling good at me. <laughs> and like, I know how, how my body, how my energy, it helps to clear my skin, like all, like all these benefits. It's like, why, why would I mess that up? And the fact that I know this 100% works is in the past, I would try different diets. I'm like, oh, like, you know, I lose weight, but then still something like everything wasn't all falling into place like I you know I would still break out sometimes or my energy would be low but you know I would lose you know like one benefit but then other drawbacks other disadvantages 
there are absolutely no disadvantages <laughs> to eating this way. Like this is seriously the best I have felt in my life in my 32 years on this planet. And I, I, I want to keep feeling this way. And so that is where I get my confidence from. It's like, I, the proof is in the feeling. And it's like, I, I know exactly what is going to happen tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And also I keep, I keep playing, um, playing that mantra, what you eat today, you crave tomorrow. Like I want to keep craving the SOS foods. I want to keep eating my broccoli and my other vegetables and my potatoes. Cause like that, that is what tastes good to me now. What, okay. So what is crazy? Let me tell you <laughs> that I had never just eaten plain steamed vegetables. Like that was never something that seemed good to me. Thought about it. I was like, I no, where's the ranch? Where's like throw a bunch of ketchup on there? Let's oil it out. Like it was like plain vegetables was never something that sounded good to me. Now, like when I eat just plain steamed broccoli, like I taste the sweetness, which is crazy. Like I, I taste, I really taste the flavor and like, I think it's honestly because when I've gotten all of like the processed foods out of my system, all the processed sugars, like, let me taste the real food, even, even potatoes. Like, I don't even add anything to them. And it's so good. I just, I just taste the real food and like when, okay. So there were recently, I think, um, cause my boyfriend, he like chews gum usually. And so I, I popped a piece of gum in my mouth the other day and I was like, what is happening? It was like, a, it was like, overload I was like this is too sweet for me crazy like, I used to chew gum all the time I was like oh my god no like my taste buds have changed which is insane and I I was like okay hey, well I guess I'm done with the gum <laughs> like I think I don't <laughs> it was never something like I need to stop chewing gum but like my body is like no nope, this is not natural like I did like I, I'm all about, like the whole foods and just what makes me feel good so mm-hmm. I feel like I totally veered off of your question, but <laughs> I could listen to you talk for hours, Sarah. You said something that made me think of, um, you know, whenever we think about the cookie, for example, we tend to fixate on, you know, but eating that cookie doesn't make me feel good. And we use that as motivation to get us to not eat something. <clears throat> instead, what we can do is flip the script. So instead of saying, you know, oh, but when I eat that, I don't feel good. When I eat that, I don't feel good. Flip mm-hmm. it and say, If I do eat this, that makes me feel great. That clears up my skin. That gives me Mm -hmm. energy on my runs. That makes me feel light and energetic. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to go for the cookie. I don't want to go for the brownies. Think when I do go for this stuff, that Mm -hmm. makes me feel really good. So there's another mindset that you can. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cause to, to switch away from like, oh, this is what I can't do anymore. It's like, no, what am I gaining? Yeah. what can I do like what is like what what am I choosing instead um yeah I feel like a lot of times when I would try um to be like strictly vegan or strictly it was like oh my god well now I, I can't have this anymore because it's not like I, I would focus on what I couldn't have mm-hmm. and then I would feel restricted and then binge and just go crazy um but no not I you just focus on like what what am I gaining what can I have yes all of these wonderful beautiful like whole mm-hmm. foods like I'm not missing out on anything I'm not missing out on anything so yeah what are you gonna do to make sure that this is a new lifestyle for you and it's not something that lasts just a couple months Mm -hmm. structural changes like making sure you're always food prepping every week or Mm -hmm. what are you gonna do to make sure that this is something that you keep up in the long term yes well definitely food I need to I mean I have kept food prepping and just to make sure I always have those foods available because otherwise you know it it is it is something to go, I have to go to the store and get the potatoes and get the vegetables and cook it. It's not like, I can't be like, oh, I don't have food now. Let me just go across the street to the diner and go like, no, they're not going to have what I want. Like I need, to, basically I need to always be prepared. And I've instilled that like usually the weekends is when I do my grocery shopping. And so it's like, okay, how do we prep for the week? I need to always make sure that I have food available. Like there've been a few times these um, past couple of weeks where I'll tell my boyfriend like oh running low on potatoes can you please just pick me up a bag of white yeah, potatoes because like I don't like I need to always have the food available and there was a couple of days during the program where I would be out all day and I didn't bring food with me and I, I mean I didn't go off plan but I just felt, I felt hungry I was not prepared and I was just irritable like, 
this is not like, it's not easy to just get quickly. And so it's up to me to take responsibility to always have my food with me. Like, am I going to be gone all day? What can I travel with? All of that, like just planning ahead. Like that is how I can definitely make sure to make it a lifestyle. I need to plan ahead Mm -hmm. and prepare my food each week. And yeah, it's not, it's not something as I'd say, once it, once it's prepared, it's easy, but it, if you're not prepared, it is not easy. So like, I, I know that going into it. Yeah. So I just need to, I need to take responsibility for it and just prepare the food. So well, you better keep up with that food prep because you are yes. glowing and you are so healthy and happy and energetic, which you were eight weeks ago when we spoke <laughs> on the phone, but you feel different. And I want you to keep that feeling. So please <laughs> Keep this up. You are such a testament to a healthy lifestyle. So please, please, for me, if you ever feel like you're slipping away, say, Emmy wouldn't want this. I want you to stay where you are. Yes. Oh my God. I'm not going back. I can't. No. Emmy, this was like seriously the best decision I made in my life. Like that's not an exaggeration at all. Like this is an investment in myself and like, this is what I needed. And they thank you so much for even creating this program and just the idea of like a mindset journal and like a coach just having all the accountability it's just it's exactly what I needed and it just oh my gosh like I'm I'm seriously a different person and it's like all thanks to you like thank you thank you so much thank you so much if you are still watching this video comment glowing because Sarah just glows, doesn't she? So comment glowing. That is the secret word for today's video. If you are still watching and I hope that you can be the next Sarah. So go to healthyemmy.org if you want to be, um, or you can just keep watching this video over and over to try to get on her level. All right, my honeys, that's it for today and I'll see you in the next one.